Good morning, everybody. Mike Nelson, CEO of FishingLending.net. Uh, Thanks so much for joining me on my uh, my live stream here. Uh, hopefully, this brief discussion will only be about five minutes or so. But uh, look, we had a crazy week in the financial markets uh, this past week, and obviously, it is just a time of, um, of uncertainty and turmoil and concern across the globe with this uh, virus. So it's it's an important time. So. I want to talk about uh, two things really in this uh, in this uh, live stream. One is kind of what happened next week uh, la or last week, I should say, in with mortgage interest rates. Uh, and you know, we have a potential scenario for borrowers and uh, consumers to be a little bit confused by what's happening in this time of instability. And then kind of some ideas of what's going to happen in the future as well, to the best we can guess. Obviously, no one knows. But before we get there, I just want to certainly be sensitive. Um, a lot of people are, are going through a tough time right now, for sure, and uh, certainly want to be sensitive to that. Um, it's not easy. Um, look, my daughters, uh, they're, they're in school right now, and their jobs, employment's affected. Uh, they, don't, they don't have any uh, illness, but, um, you know, their school's shut down. Everybody's impacted by this. Uh, you know, there's less than normal supplies in grocery markets and things like that. So that's, I want to be sensitive to that. Now, the, the overall premise around what I'm going to talk about on the financial and interest rate side is this. Even in this time of less than calm or uncertainty, in the financial real estate market, if you have a good team of advisors around you, people that have maybe seen some cycles, have some experience and kind of times where things act when we don't necessarily expect them to, you really still can make very good financial real estate based decisions. And, and I think you can you know, have some you know, good outcomes in real estate transactions. So I want to make sure everybody understands that. It's, if you have a good team around you, I think you can have a lot of success here. Okay, now let's back up a step. So at one point last week, the 10-year treasury was dropping dramatically. Yields on mortgage-backed securities were going up. And remember, yields, as yields go up, mortgage, mortgage interest rates go down. All that was happening, and so we should expect that interest rates would be dropping as well. They weren't. In a lot of cases, interest rates were actually going up quite dramatically. And if you're an agent, a lender, a buyer, a seller in the market, you're going to be kind of scratching your head here saying, you know, what's going on? Why is that happening? And so I just want to spend a couple minutes here talking about the market dynamic, what was going on to cause that so we can understand it and then hopefully make some good decisions go forward. So let, let's just back up. In times of calm, in, in general, um, in generality, when the U.S. Treasury goes down, interest rates for mortgages go down as well. Conversely, mortgage-backed securities, which is the driver for uh, hang on a sec, which is the driver for mortgage interest rates, when those are quoted in yields, and when those yields go up in mortgage-backed securities, interest rates typically fall. So that's kind of the, the framework. Let's talk about what happened last week. An, an investor, a wholesale lender or a retail lender. And I'm going to keep this at a very high level because I don't want it to be too technical and I, I want to be able to equip people to talk to their customers about this. But an investor has three kind of cost structures and way they price their interest rates. And those are related to their capacity, they're related to something called servicing, and they're related to something called hedging. And so I'm going to take just a brief moment to talk about all three of those. So capacity is just kind of what it sounds like. How many people do we have working for that investor? And how many loans can we process and deliver in a timely fashion to the consumer? We've got to originate them on time, we have to comply with regulations, and we've got to close and fund them on time. Now, these service levels associated with this are very, very important to the investors, certainly the brokers and the retailers, and absolutely to the consumers, especially in purchase transactions, because everything's got to happen on time. Well, prior to last week, interest rates were already low. So when P if you hear somebody say, well, interest rates are low because of the coronavirus, that's really not a wholly true statement. They're certainly lower because of the coronavirus, but they were already low to start. Now, what does that mean? That means that we were already at very high refinance capacities within our investors. So last week happens, and all of a sudden, the, the volume of refis just goes in and hits these investors and just literally it buries them. 
And so now they're at their capacity. So what do they do? How do they handle that? They have to deliver their loans on time. If loans are locked, they have a contractual and legal obligation to deliver those loans at lock on time. It's a real problem for the investor. They've got to do something to handle the quantity of transactions that are coming at them. So that's one part. The other part is servicing. Now, when a loan is originated and funded, a servicing is attached to it. So if you have a mortgage, you're going to get your coupon in the mail uh, each month, and you're going to pay that. Where there's costs associated with impounding the accounts, with paying taxes and insurance on time, and keeping track of what's going on that, on that mortgage. And so whoever is servicing that loan gets a fee, and they calculate how long it takes with the fee they're getting for that mortgage to go ahead and make money at it. Well, when rates came down so much, there was something called servicing runoff. A lot of loans are being refinanced long before they really ever thought they were going to be. These are very complex calculations they thought they were going to be. So now we've got a capacity issue. We have servicing runoff. So now, now we have uh, cost constraints in here. And, and the picture for the, for the wholesale investor looks a little different. The last thing is hedging. Hedging is very, very, very complex. I'm only going to hit it here briefly. But hedging basically is this. When you have an investor, they have kind of two components in their portfolio of loans. They've got a warehouse of loans, which are all the loans that are already funded and closed that they're going to package up and sell as securities in the secondary market. They've also got a locked pipeline. And that locked pipeline are loans that have not funded yet, but they're locks against them. And so what an investor do is they'll look at that picture. That, again, this is very complex. And they'll buy trade assets, things like that, in the, in the secondary market to hedge, to reduce risk on their locked and their warehouse uh, pipelines. Now, you combine all three of those together. What in essence happened last week is we saw the 10-year treasury going down. We saw yields going up in the middle of the week. They did come back down a little bit at the end of the week. And we got a period of instability and uncertainty. So what happens? We have to slow down demand. So you're going to see investors starting raising rates to handle all the fluctuations of those three very complex components. Okay, so that's what happened last week. And you can use that explanation to talk to your borrowers, your consumers, as to why there's this kind of funky you know, thing happening with interest rates versus what's happening with yields and the 10-year treasury. What do we think is going to happen in the short run, uh, or excuse me, the longer term? Well, look, the financial markets are going to sift this out, okay? I personally think, and I don't know, I'm, this is Mike's opinion, which take it with a grain of salt, I personally think once the financial markets set, sort this out, they understand their, their hedging, their servicing, and their capacities, we'll see a gradual reduction of rates back to what we, in behavior of the market that we think is normal. So that's what I think is going to happen in the long term. Do I know? Absolutely not. That's just my opinion. Now, I want to leave you with this, though. So hopefully that helps explain kind of what's going on. I want to leave you with this. Even with all that dynamic happening, rates are still historically incredibly low. I got enough gray hair in my head to remember, you know, 19, 16 to 19 percent interest rates. So I've, I've been in that environment. I wasn't working in this industry, but I certainly remember it. Rates are still very low. If you have a very good team around you, you have an agent who understands the value of the home, the transaction, what you can expect as far as the real estate, and you have a good lender working with you, you're going to make a good quality decision. You're going to, you have enough financial tools in the marketplace, and there's enough products that, that real estate is doing well. The second thing is this. The fundamental underlying foundation of real estate is very, very strong right now. The foreclosures uh, are at historic lows. I mean, like, historic. And, and if you hear, I haven't heard this yet, but if you hear somebody saying, hey, this is 2008 all over again, that's just not the case. The virus and what was going on in 2008, not related, number one. Number two, there's a huge percentage of mortgages in the United States. I want to say 80%. I don't know that number to be 100% true. I think I heard it anecdotally from an expert last week. 80% of the mortgages have a loan to value of 75% or less, meaning we're collateralized. The market is stable. So that's Mike's opinion on what's going on. I hope it helps. I hope it explains some of the dynamics in the marketplace. I'm going to repost this on YouTube and my Facebook channel. Uh, Facebook's at Efficient Lending. My YouTube is at Michael Nelson Mortgage. Later this afternoon, you can use it. Call me, text, message me anytime. I hope that helps. Keep your family safe, and we'll talk to you soon.